Discover OR International Airport, Africa's busiest airport. Hello, Displorers. Welcome to another informative video presented to you by Displorer and thanks for watching. In this video, we will take you to the beautiful country of South Africa and shine the light on the busiest airport in Africa, the OR Tambo International Airport. The transport sector in Africa is an ever-growing sector and a reason for the current bolstering continent we have. Of the mediums of transport, air is one of the most improved and essential, as it transports tourists, goods, services, labor, and so much more that brings progress to every country through exchange. Amongst the numerous airports the continent boasts of, the king is the OR International Airport. And in this video, we will go on a joy flight to discover the busiest airport on the continent. OR Tambo International Airport is an international airport situated in Kempton Park, Hauteng, South Africa. It serves as the primary airport for domestic and international travel to and from South Africa, and is Africa's busiest airport with a capacity to handle up to 28 million passengers annually. The airport which serves as the hub for South African Airways was originally known as Jan Smoot International Airport, named after the former South African Prime Minister. The airport was renamed Johannesburg International Airport in 1994 when the newly elected African National Congress government implemented the policy of not naming airports after politicians. This policy was later reversed, and on 27 October 2006, the airport was renamed O.R. Tambo International Airport after Olivier Reginald Tambo, a former ANC president. If you are new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. The airport was founded in 1952 as Jan Smoot International Airport, two years after Smoot's death, near the town of Kempton Park on the East Rand. It replaced Palmier Fontaine International Airport, which had handled European flights since 1945. In 1943, a decision was made by the Cabinet of the Union of South Africa to construct three international airports, with a civil airport advisory committee formed to investigate and report on the viability. That report was submitted to the cabinet in March 1944, with one main international airport on the Witwater Strand and two smaller international airports at Cape Town and Durban. The South African Railways and Harbors Administration was given the role of managing the project, and later in 1944, a member went to the United States to study standards and methods of construction. Four possible sites around Johannesburg were identified, with one south of Johannesburg chosen, but soon discarded due to being situated on land with gold-bearing reefs below. Sites were then narrowed down to Kempton Park and the existing airport at the Palmier Fontaine. In the late 1950s, jet passenger aircraft became the norm, and there was a need to expand the existing ground facilities at the airport which began in the 1960s and early 1970s. In addition to the new airside facilities, ground development included improved road access, parking areas, hotel, retail areas and car hire. The late 1960s saw a new choice of aircraft for South Africa Airways, the Boeing 747. A decision was made by the Minister of Transport to obtain three, later five 747s, for the airline. Delivery would begin in October 1971 with the first flight to London on 10 December 1971 with daily services from February 1972. These purchases however required new hangar facilities with the contracts awarded in September 1969. Construction started in December 1968 and was completed in October 1971. Other new buildings such as workshops, testing facilities, stores, staff accommodation and air cargo handling buildings were built. The new hangar would allow for two 747s in each bay, with dimensions of 73.2 meters wide, 24.4 meters high and a depth of 91.4 meters. It was used as a test airport for Concorde during the 1970s to determine how the aircraft would perform while taking off and landing at high elevations, known as hot and high testing. During the 1980s, many countries stopped trading with South Africa because of the United Nations sanctions imposed against South Africa 
in the struggle against apartheid, and many international airlines stopped flying to the airport. These sanctions also resulted in South African Airways being refused rights to fly over most African countries. And in addition, the risk of flying over some African countries was emphasized by the shooting down of two passenger aircraft over Rhodesia, such as the Air Rhodesia Flight 825 and 827, forcing them to fly around the bulge of Africa. This required specially modified aircraft like the long-range Boeing 747SP, and second runway was built at the airport in the late 1980s. In December of 1993, an almost $8 million upgrade at the airport was completed, which included an 880 meters 3,000 ton steel airside corridor consisting of two levels high of 6 meters wide with 13 passenger bridges. The upper levels are connected to the departure lounges through security screening points. Lower levels are for arrivals for entry into the immigration and custom areas. A future provision for extensions to this airside corridor was included in the design. A new airside bus terminal was also added for busing in passengers to aircraft not able to dock next to the terminal. Other parts of the project included upgrading the terminal facilities for the passengers. Following the ending of apartheid, the airport's name and that of the other international airports in South Africa were changed and these restrictions were lifted. With the creation of the Airports Company of South Africa, the ACSA in the mid-90s, a plan to commercialize the airport began, with new passenger and retail and airside facilities to handle a larger number of planes, completing this phase in 2004. The airport overtook Cairo International Airport in 1996 as the busiest airport in Africa, and it is the fourth busiest airport in African Middle East region after Dubai International Airport, Hamad International Airport, and Abu Dhabi International Airport. In fiscal year 2010, the airport handled 8.82 million departing passengers. In late 2005, a name change was proposed for the airport's OR Tambo International, after former ANC president and anti apartheid activist Oliver Reginald Tambo, an apparent change to the president of the neutrally named airport. The name change was formally announced in the Government Gazette of South Africa on 30 June 2006, allowing a 30-day window for the public to register objections. The name change was implemented on 27 October 2006 with the unveiling of the new signs at the airport. Critics noted the considerable expense involved in renaming the airport, and the decision to use a politician as the name would be obscure confusing and in some instances offensive. Corn Mulder of the Freedom Front Plus had stamped the renaming, nothing less than political opportunism and attempts by the ANC government to dodge the true socio-economic issues of the country. On 26 November 2006, the airport became the first in Africa to host the Airbus A380. The aircraft landed in Johannesburg on its way to Sydney through the South Pole on a test flight. There was no provision for rapid train access until 2010, when the Gold Train project allowed train passengers to reach the airport from the Johannesburg CBD, Santon, and Pretoria. Airport Information OR Tambo International Airport is a hot and high airport, situated 1,700 meters above mean sea level, where the air is thin. The thinner air is also the reason for the longer than usual runways. OR Tambo International Airport is one of only three airports in the Africa Middle East region, as well as the only one properly located in Africa that has non stop flights to all inhabited continents, the other two being Dubai International Airport and Doha International Airport. On 10th January 2013, the airport's ICAO code was changed from FAJS to FAOR. Aircraft Viewing Decks The airport has two viewing decks, with one located above the central terminal building and the other in an administrative section of the airport, above the international check-in counters. There are regular displays of Oliver Reginald Tambo, the airport's namesake in the viewing decks. Infrastructure The airport has several infrastructures, 
which are the facilities which make the airport as efficient as it is, hence its reputation on the continent. They include runways, taxiways and aprons, ground transportation, terminals, traffic stats bureau, and many other buildings, which embody the full package of the airport to make it of great standards. OR Tambo International Airport has two runways adjacent to the airport's terminal buildings. The runways are equipped with approach lighting systems, sequenced flashes, touchdown zone lighting, runway threshold, edge and center line lights. OR Tambo International Airport has a network of asphalt taxiways connecting runways, nine aprons, and maintenance facilities, all of which are 30.5 meters wide, except for Taxiway Eco, which is 60 meters wide. There are six terminals at the airport, but these can be broken down into three major areas, the international terminals, the domestic terminals, and the transit terminals. Terminals A and B boast over 140 retail stores, while duty-free stores are based in Terminal A, and many of them stock products exclusively available at the airport. There is also ample parking available with a state-of-the-art technology that allows visitors to identify available parking spaces easily. Ground transport in the airport includes a road transit terminal, which has been built between the domestic and international terminals. It houses the Hao train station, linking the airport to Santon, a major business district and a primary tourist area and from there, the rest of the Gautrian system. The airport is easily accessible by car, located northeast of Johannesburg Central, at the eastern end of the R24 Airport Freeway. Five bus city lines, operated by Metrobus and Putco, pass through the airport twice a day. The buses are accessible in the morning and the evening, when there are many passengers departing or arriving. There are also private bus lines operating express buses to the CBD of Johannesburg, as well as other locations. All this grander aspect of the airport and more is the reason why it can compete intercontinentally and is the busiest in Africa. There you have it, this Florence. That was everything you need to know about Africa's busiest airport or our international airport. Thanks for watching this video, and if you did enjoy the video, do want to give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe and share with your friends.